In this video, we're briefly going to go over ethical considerations in clinical research. This information can be found in more detail in Chapter 2 of your textbook. In addition, you will be required to complete city training in human subjects protections, which will go into more depth on human subjects research and these um, topics. Some of the objectives in this session are to explain clinical phases of the drug approval process, to understand the guiding ethical principles in clinical research, to understand the regulatory framework governing clinical research, including informed consent and data confidentiality, and to explore key ethical challenges involved in clinical research. So in your textbook, there's a really nice um, description or overview of the drug development process. Drug development is extremely um, expensive and uh, requires a lot of time to conduct. So there's many different phases that a uh, drug goes through before it actually reaches market and is approved by the um, FDA. I would refer back to your um, uh, textbook and look at Table 2, 1, the clinical drug testing process that goes through the different phases and the purpose of those phases. There are several different ethical principles in human subjects research that we should consider, and most of these um, guidelines and uh, protocols, regulations have been um, a result of problems in research in the past. One such guideline is the Belmont Report, and it covers three primary areas of consideration, so respect for persons, beneficence, and justice. Respect for persons has to do with consent issues, so basically, um, identifying what uh, that telling the participants that their particip participation in a study is voluntary, um, that you will maintain confidentiality and privacy of their participation, that you have all the elements of the consent, that you have a document that they can sign and have a copy of so they understand their procedures, and the consent process where you explain the study participation, risks, benefits, and answer any questions they have. This is particularly important for special populations where giving informed consent might be difficult. So in particular in children and decisionally impaired uh, persons. Beneficence has to do with the concept of a risk benefit analysis. So do the benefits of participating in the study outweigh the risks? And um, in most cases that yes, that, that should be the case. The benefits should outweigh the risks. Um, however, this benefit-risk ratio can change over time over the course of a study, and so with continued monitoring through data safety monitoring plans and data safety monitoring boards, this analysis issue is um, constantly monitored and updated. And justice has to do with recruitment practices, and so ensuring that you're doing a fair um, sampling of the population for your research study and you're not discriminating against any particular group. There are several regulatory bodies that um, oversee clinical research and these range from um, federal regulatory bodies to institutional to um, ones that have to do with uh, drugs specifically or novel drugs and that's the FDA um, and then also reporting there are also several key ethical challenges in clinical research. This is a list of some of these, and these are taken from Chapter 2. Um, please refer back to Chapter 2 to review um, these different ethical challenges. What's most important in conducting clinical research with these ethical challenges in mind is trying to come up with a way to minimize the occurrence of these challenges and what to do if they do arise.